I bet you guys will never guess where I am. Thanks to my girl for surprising me. I got my very first track day. Welcome back to episode three of my first track day experience. I got a lot of footage for you. Let's get going. Here we go. I'm gonna get on the track for the very first time. There's so much going on through your head when you're driving, like you can't really focus on anything but the track, so sorry if I'm not narrating much, but I'm telling you guys, this is physically and mentally taxing, like this is a lot of work. You have to make sure that you're right on line with every turn, you're following the driver ahead of you, you gotta be careful the person behind you is in control of his car. You don't know what people's uh, experience levels like, so there's all these different factors. Plus, the rain's starting to come down, so I'll be good though. Biggest struggle as a first time driver on the track is to just stay relaxed. Ugh, gotta loosen my joints, take deep breaths, and relax. Here we go. So here's the deal, right? All our lives, we've been taught to keep several car lengths of distance between ourselves and the person in front of us. For the first time in my life, I've got an instructor on a racetrack doing anywhere from 55 to 75, 80 miles an hour, telling me to keep a single car length of distance apart from the car in front of me. That is just crazy to me. 
I've seen it on TV, I've seen it at the races, but actually doing it myself is scary. And here's why. You don't know if the person in front of you has good brakes. You don't know if they're gonna suddenly slam on their brakes. You don't know if the car behind you has good enough brakes to actually slow down and not hit you from behind. So your mind is just going in a million places. You wanna watch the person ahead of you. You wanna watch what the person behind you is doing. And all the while you need to keep a safe one car length distance. It's just not normal. But you have to have faith. You have to have faith in your instructor. You have to have faith in the other drivers and you have to have faith and belief in yourself and you just have to push your car and you just continue forward. Okay, my stress levels are through the roof right now. It's raining again and I am right behind the instructor and I have to keep one single car length behind him. It's just, it feels impossible to me. I also don't have a clue how this little Toyota Corolla can accelerate so fast, but as you guys are about to see, this car has got some speed. It's crazy ridiculous, but of course, you know, you put an excellent driver that's been driving for years, a professional driver for that matter, inside a Toyota Corolla, and he'll do circles around me on the track and everybody else who's training today, no matter what car we're driving. Now this turn right here is one of those turns that you definitely feel the lateral G's just pushing you to the side of your car. Never felt that feeling before. These next series of turns are called the S's and as you can see by the skid marks on the ground there, there's a lot of cars that actually lost control, spun out and hit the wall or went off the side and uh, into the grass area. So. We were warned to take them very carefully and make sure to hit the apex of the turn just as the instructor is doing in front of us. Many of you have actually asked me to put as much footage of the track as possible so that you can study it in preparation for the day that you go on the track at Sears Point Sonoma Raceway. So this next lap will be without any narration and again this is for those who have asked. Here we go, enjoy.
So at this point, as you guys can see, my confidence is actually pretty high. I am having a good time. I believe at this time I was breathing pretty well <laughs> um, and uh, just having a blast. The, the only thing that I know that I struggled with was the confidence in staying one car length apart from everybody else. So a lot of other cars, as you can see, they they had no problem staying one car length apart, but I just didn't feel safe doing it. So I kept my safe distance just because I didn't want to take any risks and I enjoy driving the way that I did drive on the track. Maybe if it, this was uh, for speed or for time, uh, I wouldn't get the best time on the track, but as a first time, track experience i preferred to keep it safe better safe than sorry as they say Okay guys, I want to talk to you about a uh, mistake that I made during one of the laps. I couldn't find it on the footage, but I definitely believe that I made this mistake because I remember feeling a little unconfident about the turn, but the turn that's coming up, I believe it was turn number two. I did not hug the road on the left hand side tight enough and um, one of the other instructors right over here as we're coming out of this turn one of the other instructors saw me on the left side right here they said that my rear tires actually hit the mud and that is a very dangerous thing because i could have spun out of control and honestly after this happened and they talked to me about it i was completely deflated and i almost wanted to just bury myself in a hole somewhere and disappear and I even wanted to, to, to get out of the car and <laughs> uh, and just call it quits because I was a bit embarrassed. Uh, but I guess what the moral of this is, be careful of that turn. That's one of the toughest turns of the entire track because it is a blind turn. And uh, just take that turn the correct way. Don't go too far out and just know you're going to make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes and when you do make those mistakes you know you just have to pick yourself up and you have to try again and that's what i did and once i uh, did it again and again and again i just only perfected it and got better and i just continued enjoying my day So back to the classroom we go and of course as I expected 
without naming me or pointing me out, they did bring up the mistake that somebody made around turn number two. And as you can see on the whiteboard behind the instructor there, they uh, drew out the apex of the turn and how you're supposed to go into the turn and out of the turn. And, um, they just uh, gave us a refresher on that. And uh, then we were off to break. And after that was session four, the last session of the day. Yeah, we went through the uh, guardrail yeah, yeah, yeah. about halfway. All right, this is our last run. Gotta make it perfect. So at this point in the day, I'm past the adrenaline, I'm past the nervousness, I'm hitting the gas, I'm feeling confident, and my only goal is to get that perfect lap in. I'm trying to squeeze in as close as I possibly can to the instructor in front of me, and I think I do a pretty darn good job. If you guys watch and observe me, I'm actually hitting the throttle and driving way differently than I did earlier in the day, and I'm having so much fun. Now, many of you have asked me what top speed did I hit on the track and you know what honestly you guys you don't pay attention to your top speed when you're on the track you're only paying attention at least as a beginner you're only paying attention to taking that next turn hitting the apex following the driver in front of you and not making any mistakes speed is out of the question it's the last thing you think about such a good improvement I came in with uh, this feeling of being deflated a bit because I screwed up the time before and I got called out on it <laughs> but I corrected it and I was able to do that 3-3-8 three, three, turn I know exactly what I did wrong now practice makes perfect I got that, man. Yeah, I I nailed it that time. If you ever need some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do private I, driver development. I got your card. I right, give it to yep, you. You did. Cool. Cool. You did. I'll probably hit you up too. did it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well that was an absolute blast 
My first session was pretty easy because it was slow. Second session, I kind of screwed up. And then I was completely deflated because they uh, told me how badly I screwed up. <laughs> and then uh, the third session, I killed it. Absolutely crushed it. But don't hear it from me. You're going to hear it from Dave himself. All right, so I'm here with Dave, one of the instructors from uh, Sears Point Racing School. Dave, <laughs> that was a lot of fun, man. You did well. Did well in the Grand Sport today. I'll, I'll tell you, man, I after that second session when you guys yeah. uh, kind of came down on me, I got deflated. <laughs> but I almost had that feeling to step away and just leave <laughs> and not well, get on the track again Yeah, because well, I knew the rain was coming. We're not trying to deflate your ego. <laughs> we're just trying to make sure you're safe and incrementally working up your speed yeah. and getting yourself to where you can appreciate this massive performance envelope that yeah. this Grand Sport offers. So yeah. I think by the end of the day, your skill set developed progressively each session and by the last session here, just when you're getting the hang of it, we're all done, right? You gotta come back for more. So but I got it, it was done a pleasure, good. Uh, working So I know you. I did terrible the yeah. second session but I improved on the third right? for sure for, a okay. huge improvement on the third See? in the fourth session <laughs> you were golden so you had everything going right the line the performance driving one that we do it's all about getting the line reinforced in your brain making sure you're ingrained in your head where you need to be yeah. proximity to the line on the racetrack once you got the line then we can start working on later braking breaking a straight line breaking and downshifting working the gears a little bit more pulling more rpm uh, before you do your upshifts, that kind of thing, working on good corner exit speed, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then it progresses from there. The speed comes in a comfortable manner. Like you're yeah. behind, you're behind your wheel, your car, and you're appreciating your car, and you're not there scared to death. Oh yeah, because I of just it, right? never know so. when those wheels. <laughs> Those especially. Well, you got right. good race rubber on here right now, bud. <laughs> I know. This is what we call race rubber. This low tread right here, when that uh -huh. gets heated up, we don't have much temperature today, but on a good sunny day, that'd be some great race rubber there. Yeah. That's some sticky tire there. It, it is. So we like that. But today was inclement weather. Had a little bit of wet out there, so I can imagine it was a little sketchy for you. It was. And you stayed disciplined. Right. Some people don't, but you did, so be proud of that, you know? Good. Hopefully we helped you out a lot. You did, man, you did. <laughs> so. so tell me about yourself. What's, what's your background? How many years have oh, you done God. this? I'm, a, I'm an old veteran, man. I've been at this track since 1990. I started out here at Skip Barber Racing School. Okay. Sweeping the garage shop floors, working as a Formula Ford mechanic. And um, I progressed through my first three-day racing school through them here at this track. And then I uh, started racing their Formula Ford uh, Amateur Series. Did okay, won some races in that. Then they had a Barber Saab Pro Series that I, um, I tapped into for a few races. And I realized that once you got to the pro level and got your pro license it was all about you need some big money behind you to continue this this uh this bad habit right as with, as <laughs> so, with anything in life <laughs> so so you realize very early on that it's a very it's very much a money sport it's expensive but it is as addicting as anything you know anything that's fun to do um it's so much fun so i've been with it now for 30 years i've been wow. at this track for 30 years i i went from skip barber I, then i became an indy car mechanic worked in indy car for uh several years came back out of the mechanical ran ranks and then came back to jim russell racing school here at sonoma and came back as an instructor started racing cars again my my whole career path was wanting to be a driver and a Accomplish that, but never you're never happy. You know, you always want to be full time with a team for year after year. But that takes uh, you know millions of dollars a season to, in sponsorship money to make that happen, or getting recognized to where someone keeps you in a car for full full season. So when you're not racing full time, you're um, you're teaching it, or you're working for the auto manufacturers. I do a lot of manufacturer work, vehicle testing, do a lot of stunt precision driving for movies, television, all that. Oh, and then, um, you know, I advanced up the ladder from like Indy Lights, Formula Cars, Formula Fords, Indy Lights, NASCAR, I still race in NASCAR part time on the road courses, and uh, IMSA sports car and GT3 Porsches, ran some Daytona prototypes, a lot of 25 hour Thunder Hill races, a lot of endurance races, uh, Baja 1000. Wow. I've kind of dabbled into everything sort of jack all trades master and none but um i had no I, idea who i was talking to yeah, a minute so, ago <laughs> so uh wheel smith 
inc.com. We do some private driver development, work with a lot of guys like yourself. Um, we do some one-on-one -on -one stuff so we could really elevate and um, accelerate your learning curve in a day of coaching and uh, get you on a path to getting your racing license if that's what you're interested in or just continue trying to be a, a respected high performance driver that um, when you get on the track with other people, they're not going to be afraid of you. They're going to understand that you put the work in to understand the, the ethical um, format of driving on a track and, and being safe out there. So yeah, yeah hit us up. Dave Smith, Wheel uh, Smith, Inc. Dot com. My first so. track yeah. day. Maria, thank you. Thank you so much. You're awesome. You made a little boy's dream come true today. <laughs> it was a blast. There were moments where I was kind of nervous. I'll be straight up, but I pushed through it and uh, I had I had a ton of fun. I'm sure that my thighs and my arms are going to be super sore tomorrow. <laughs> um, plus, I met a bunch of new friends. So, hey, the deeper I get in the car community, the happier I am. Anyways, you guys, if you have a passion for vehicles, just go out there and, and go for it. Just go for it. You know, you don't have to have a $60,000 car. There's people out here that came in their Miatas, you know, just get your car and go out there and race and learn how to drive safely because, man, this is just too much fun. I'll see you guys next time.